My name is Mr. Clayton. I'm the Dean of Students here at Philadelphia Electrical and Technology Charter High School. Here, we try to strive to maintain a safe environment. One of the places we can't guarantee a physical safe environment is on the internet. This is because of incidents of cyberbullying. Today, I'm going to give you some examples of cyberbullying and how to deal with it. Bullying has been going on amongst teenagers forever. Cyberbullying is a relatively new phenomenon. What is cyberbullying? Let's look at a few examples before we answer that question. The first example is one of betrayal. There's a group of ninth grade girls sleeping over a friend's house, and they pretend to befriend a girl over the internet who is not popular. They persuade her to give up her secrets uh, about who she likes, her feelings, that kind of thing. The next day, they bring in a printed out copy of her feelings, and they show it to everybody in class, and the girl is horrified. Our next example of uh, cyberbullying is a breach of privacy. Marty is a high school junior who secretly takes a cell phone photo of an overweight student named Joe and sends that photo out uh, over the internet to the rest of the school. Joe gets embarrassed and does not want to come back to school anymore. A final example of cyberbullying is unwanted and threatening posts. Let's say there is a 14-year-old student who has created a web blog about themselves. Um, and then now there's an anonymous person who starts posting uh, sexual comments and links to porn sites on that blog. That would be considered cyberbullying. So, to answer the question, what is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is using email, chat rooms, websites, and other forms of uh, electronic communication to uh, send mean-spirited messages, make cruel remarks uh, to individuals, post unflattering or derogatory photos, make direct threats of violence, and to sexually harass another student. Cyberbullying is also the repeated misuse of these technologies to harass, intimidate, bully, or terrorize another person. Now for a few examples of cyberbullying. The first is from a 12-year-old from Virginia. Being bullied makes me feel really bad, and I often get depressed later at home. I would also plot revenge and privately express my hatred towards the bully, but I doubt I would really do anything about it. I don't usually go to adults to tattle on people, even though I know it's not tattling. It's real. The next example is from a 14-year-old girl from New Jersey. Being bullied over the internet is worse. It's torment and hurts. They say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That quote is a lie, and I don't believe in it. Sticks and stones may cause nasty cuts and scars, but those cuts and scars will heal. Insulting words hurt and sometimes take forever to heal. An example from a 14-year-old girl from Illinois. I still cry when I think of what she said. After a while, you start believing all of these things people tell you that aren't true. When I look in the mirror, I wonder if I'm fat. I'm not, after what my ex-friend said. This example comes from a 15-year-old girl from the United Kingdom. One of my friends started hassling on me on MSN Messenger. She was sending me nasty messages and text messages, and this carried on at school. I told my parents, my friends, and a teacher. She was spoken to a few times, but it still carries on a bit now, but not as bad as because I have blocked her online. This really affected me at home and at school. I couldn't concentrate on schoolwork, and I was always upset and down. Now I just ignore it and get on with it. I have plenty more friends, and I don't need her anymore. Maybe one day she will give up and grow up. Finally, the example of Ryan Patrick Halligan, a 13-year-old boy who was bullied for months online. Classmates sent him uh, instant messages that called him gay, threatened him, taunted, and insulted him. Um, these cyber bullies were relentless. In 2003, Ryan finally killed himself. How pervasive is cyberbullying? In a recent survey of 5,500 teens, uh, nearly 80% said they had read or spread gossip online. More than half said that they had seen websites that made fun of their peers. Who fits the profile of a cyberbully? Individuals with no strong relationships, 
Um, they are often immature. Um, those who are involved with hate groups or who have bull been bullied by themselves and click. Now a couple of examples of the offenders of cyberbullying. One is a 15-year-old boy who said, well, the only reason I bullied is because the same person I was doing it to did it to me like a week before. It wasn't the right thing to do, but at the time it felt like I was getting revenge. This example from a 15-year-old girl. Sometimes I get insulted for no reason because I said my mind. So then I get into a fight and feel good when I prove I'm right because it shows I have an impact on people. Once I got into a huge fight because these girls were bullying one of my friends and I tried to tell them to stop, resulting in them insulting me, but me insulting them as well. They made threats to beat her up. What else could I do? They printed out what I said, but not what they said and showed the principal. I got in a lot of trouble, but talked my way out by telling the truth, something they did not do. Why do people bully? Sometimes it's a continuation of a face-to-face -face bullying. Sometimes people are angry with each other or jealous. Often it's peer pressure and sometimes people do it for fun. Why does the internet produce so much cyberbullying? Uh, there's a few reasons. One, there's no tangible feedback. You can't just say face-to-face, -face, stop that. Two, there's a sense of being anonymous. Sometimes you can post comments and no one knows it's from you. Um, also, there are multiple online personas. Um, you can say one thing as one person or another as another person. This graph shows the percent of victimized youth online. As you can see to the left, 34% of youth have been bullied online. 43% of these youth ignore it, but 39% feel disrespected. And then you can see the others. Why does cyberbullying seem to happen all the time? Well, um, it's a 24-7 problem that often happens while you're at home. And sometimes people are afraid to report it to adults. Adults may not even know that it's taking place. That's why it's essential that you let them know if it is happening to you. Why don't victims ask for help? Uh, one, kids view the internet as their lifeline to interact with their friends or their peer group. And two, they don't want adults to know that they have a problem with cyberbullying because they feel they might lose their access to Don't be a victim. Talk about bullying, bullying in general with friends, teachers, and family. Discuss what personal information is appropriate to tell others and what is not. Visit some popular sites with your parents, teachers, or friends and discuss what you see there and what could be a danger. Learn to develop realistic expectations for relationships. How to stop a cyber bully. First of all, be private. Keep your passwords, pictures, and secrets to yourself. Please do not share them. Take five. Don't reply in anger. Stop, block, and tell. Don't reply, block the sender, and tell someone. Save the evidence and print it out. Google yourself to see if anybody's talking about you.
The purpose of this presentation was to inform you of cyberbullying. If you ever feel that you are a victim of cyberbullying, please let a staff member here at Philadelphia ENT uh, know so that we can handle the situation. Thank you. Have a nice day.